Ecamm Live Beta 4 has been released and it's another good one. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. Now, about a month ago, they released uh, Ecamm Live version 3.9 Beta 1, and I did a video all about it, and it was packed full of great features, and I thought, this is amazing. If this just gets released now, uh, everyone will be really happy. But about two weeks later, they released Ecamm Live Beta 3.9 Beta 2, and I did a video about that one, which I'll link to up at the top. And that had even more great features. And I thought, surely now it's ready for release. Well, there was a beta three that snuck in about a week later that was uh, just a couple of fixes and things like that. Uh, but I was waiting for the main release. Well, they've done it again because now we're on to version 3.9 beta 4 uh, and it's just got some awesome new features uh, some of which I requested myself as well as many other people requesting them as well uh, and so that is what I'm going to talk to you about in this video and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the uh, features first of all very quickly uh, and then I'll go and demonstrate some of them as well and I do give you advanced warning there is a little bit of silliness in this video <laughs> so apologies in advance for that but I'm hoping it's all to illustrate a point so before I get into it I do just want to say I did say there would be silliness. I do just want to say that I really love the new beta. It's got some great new features that are going to certainly change the way that I can or make it a lot easier to do the things that I normally want to do with Ecamm Live. Uh, there's lots of ways that I like to integrate graphics and things like that for uh, not so much for my channel actually but some of the other things that I use it for and this is going to make it so much easier. So let's just get into the actual features shall we. The first thing is related to uh, cameras uh, and the uh, first one on the list is that there is enhanced support for network cameras <laughs> or enhanced network camera support whichever way around you want to say it uh, this isn't something that I use to be honest I don't use network cameras but I know a lot of people in the community do so uh, I'm sure you'd be very heard, <laughs> very pleased to hear about the enhanced network camera support <laughs> the next is related to USB support now a lot of people don't realize that you can just plug in a uh, camera directly over USB and in many cases uh, Ecamm Live will just recognize it certainly with the uh, Canon cameras uh, for most of them it does do that uh, I didn't realize this at first myself I thought you needed the uh, Canon EOS webcam utility if you wanted to use it over USB and whilst that is true if you want to use it directly into applications like Zoom and Teams and things like that uh, Ecamm themselves have uh, just done all of the work for us <laughs> so they've got all of the compatibility built in uh, and then obviously now I just use Ecamm as my virtual camera anyway so but now they've added support for some new cameras so whenever new cameras do come out they do need to do a little bit of work just to add in that compatibility so the new cameras are the Fujifilm GFX 100S that is now uh, compatible over USB the uh, Sony A7S 3 the Sony A6600 and finally my next camera by the way the Sony ZV E10 uh, so uh, these now are all compatible directly over USB directly into your computer I should say that I think there is a uh, and a limitation of the uh, this way of getting the signal in over USB that you might only be able to get 720p so I know that's the case with my Canon uh, I don't get the sort of full resolution necessarily out of it but Ecamm does a great job of uh, the upscaling in any case uh, so that's why people still do use things like the uh, Elgato Camlink 4k where you can plug in go from HDMI on your camera to HDMI in the Camlink and then plug that into your USB and then you can get a higher resolution uh, but nevertheless it is still great to have that compatibility for USB built in and uh, we've just got these four new cameras added to the list as well so uh, next up sorry about that I did uh, I did mention that there'd be a bit of silliness <laughs> next up is in overlays and uh, I'll go through all of this and demonstrate actually how it works but just quickly uh, we've now got overlay stroke or outline this is something that I put in as a feature request as did other people as well uh, and that's basically where you can see my my camera screen at the moment and it's got this white line around it that is just a border around the outside or a stroke so you can now add that to camera overlays to text overlays and also to screen sharing overlays as well I really think this is one thing that's going to sort of transform the way people use Ecamm uh, and sort of negate the, lead, the need in a lot of cases for uh, like graphical overlays, uh, which I had made for all of my scenes and things like that before. Well, now you can almost just do it really without uh, without the need for that. So that is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Next up is the uh, the screen share green screen. This was another thing that I put in as a feature request because I do a lot of stuff with, uh, again, not so much on the channel as such, but I do a lot of stuff with Ecamm with uh, presentations where I well 
basically what I'm doing right now, actually having bought in this little sidebar here with the, these these bullet points. Uh, so I'm actually doing this now in uh, Power, uh, not PowerPoint, in Keynote. <laughs> I'm going to talk about PowerPoint later in uh, in Keynote, uh, but then I'm just doing it on a slide with a green background. So uh, I've uh, keyed out the rest of the slide and you only see the bit that I want you to see. Uh, so that's something that I've used uh, quite extensively before, uh, but I'll, I had to do a uh, sort of workaround uh, for that. So now to have it just sort of built in that you can do the green screen in Ecamm is uh, is awesome. <laughs> Next up is uh, the text overlay window. So when you are editing text, before the window used to be just stuck right over the, uh, the place where you were really putting your text. So it was a little bit awkward and I'll come on to that and it's probably easy to just show you that one in a moment. Uh, next is the uh, the option to show the most recent comment as an overlay. Obviously, when you've got your comments in a live stream, you can always go and just double click on them and add them into the live stream. But this means now we've got a keyboard shortcut to actually just go and add that last comment into the uh, the stream. Uh, and that brings me on to <laughs> the next section, which is uh, Stream Deck, because we've now got two new buttons. Uh, one of them is to show and hide the window, show and hide the window controls. So that's the controls that are all over the actual Ecamm window itself. Uh, there was always a keyboard shortcut to do this and so I used to have a sort of multi-action in Stream Deck to go and activate Ecamm Live and then to activate the keyboard shortcut. Well now they've just added it in as its own uh, own button so that is uh, that's great. It means you can get the controls out of the way to see what you're doing especially useful if you're just sort of preparing and editing things or get not not editing but uh, preparing overlays and positioning things that's what I meant to say. Next one is the uh, show last comment as an overlay. So that is that feature that I just mentioned uh, previously. Uh, well, they have actually just added in a custom button for it as well. So you don't need to go and set that all up. There's just a button to add in the last comment to your uh, stream. Then, uh, by the way, when you do all this, if you want to get the update for, or to, in order to get access to this, when you do update to the beta, uh, you'll be prompted to update your Stream Deck plugin. So just, uh, this is a little pop-up that will come up during installation. So make sure you do update it, and then you'll get these two plugins just appear in your Stream Deck. And while we're on pop-ups, there'll also be one to update your virtual camera as well. So make sure you do that so that you won't have any issues with your virtual camera running from Ecamm. And finally, the uh, last thing is you can now stream to Twitter from Ecamm Live. <laughs> so that is uh, that is something that I shall certainly be trying out later. Of course, you know that I will. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, it basically just shows up as another destination in the same as you can choose between uh, Twitch, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and so on, or to record. Well, now you can also uh, just stream directly to Twitter. So uh, that is uh, a summary of them. Let's go and actually have a look at how these work. But before we do, I just want to mention once again that I love this new beta. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is I'll show you how some of these things work and then show you how I've done a couple of these little silly things that I've done today because uh, they are silly examples that I threw together in a few minutes and basically it shows you how you can use uh, Keynote with Ecamm Live uh, to do something a little bit more special, really. Uh, so I'll do a whole video about how to uh, use Keynote with Ecamm with these new features, because I did do one before, which I'll leave a link up into in the top corner. And in that one, I talked all about the workaround that you need to do. Well, now there's no workaround. It just works. <laughs> so uh, I'll update that video at some point. But for now, what I'll do is I'll come into my uh, live demo mode, and then I'll give you a bit of a... Uh, uh, demonstration of some of these features. Here, by the way, down at the bottom, you can see I've got this big uh, green thing. This is actually just my uh, my uh, keynote slides running. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene. I'll just come and create a new scene over here. Blank scene. Let's get a moving background. I'll just use the same one. Uh, this is just a moving video background that I've got. And then what I can do is I can come down and add it in a camera overlay. So I'll click on the camera overlay. Uh, let's change the shape of this. So this was all in the uh, the previous betas uh, releases where you can change the shape to be, let's have a squircle. <laughs> I don't tend to use those ones so much, but uh, they do have a very pleasing look to them. So now what you can see is, that, as I say, this... Uh, uh, corner radius was added in in the previous version and as was the, uh, the squircle shape itself uh, but now we've also got this one here border width so I can just move that one up and add a border to that uh, that particular overlay so let me just move that out of the way make it a little bit bigger so now you can see that we've got a border around it uh, let me just get rid of my uh, green screen background there we go and put my usual one in and got a bit of a halo <coughs> halo above my head and just 
<coughs> excuse me, move that out of the way. Uh, so you can also do this on text overlay. So let me show you with a text overlay. If I come down to over here, click on text overlay. Uh, now, what you might remember is on the previous version, this text overlay box always opened up here. It was kind of like pinned to the, uh, the actual frame. And what that meant is you couldn't actually get to what was behind it. Now that was a bit frustrating at times for me because often I would be trying to use the color picker to pick out a color from the scene that I was in. So if I'd created a background, something like this, then I would be, whoops, I haven't got that one looping. Let me start that to loop. There we go. Uh, I might be picking out a color from here, for example. Uh, so if this was over the top, you wouldn't necessarily always be able to get to the color that you wanted. So uh, that's one use case for it. But if I just uh, call this one uh, text, uh, and you can see here, you can add the uh, the stroke as well. So we have the rounded corners that were added in the previous version, uh, but now you can also add in the uh, the stroke around the outside of the text box. Uh, previously, the workaround to do this was to have a sort of a blank text box that you could use and then you could make use that to make the border and put the other one in front of it. Uh, but that was again, a bit finicky. Whereas now it's basically, here we go. We've just got the text on the screen. Uh, I can obviously use alt and drag to copy it. And let me just change this one to be text two <laughs> so that we can tell the difference between them. And we've got text one here. So the other benefit of having the text box off the screen is it means you can actually, as well as going in and editing this one, if you just double click on one of these, then you can go and make adjustments to that one as well. So say we want to change the, the stroke or something like that, or the margin, then you can just go in and uh, change it like that. Uh, and then if you click on this other one, it will activate that one. So you can just sort of flick between them as well. To activate the changes though, you do still, when you click save, it does still come out of that. So it perhaps would be nice if uh, actually this box could persist until you close it. But obviously as soon as you press save, then it closes it down again. So you do still have to go back in if you want to actually physically make any major adjustments to the other one. But there you go, that is how the, uh, the outlines work on text boxes, which I think looks really good. Uh, not that particular example, <laughs> but just the concept of them. Uh, so then the next thing that I'll want to look at is the screen sharing uh, overlay. So I'm going to add in a screen sharing overlay. Uh, again, you've got borders on this, uh, but I'm just going to take the borders off for a moment. Uh, let me take the borders off and I'm going to share. I've got my uh, stream deck uh, open down at the bottom. So I'm going to share that particular window. So I'll come up to here and instead of the primary display, I'll share stream. Dream Deck. Uh, and in fact, this is probably a good idea just to quickly demonstrate <laughs> while we've got this open. I'll just move this down here. Just to, let's delete these uh, these text overlays or move them out of the way. But let's put it down there. Uh, so with this, uh, this overlay that I've got now, uh, let me just make the shape a little bit different. I will make it a custom shape. Uh, now, obviously, we can crop in on uh, on Windows, can't we? So uh, you can, since the, the previous beta, you can hold the Option key and you can crop into the side of the window. Well, what you can actually do now with uh, the uh, oak, uh, screen share overlays is you can activate green screen. Now, this obviously doesn't have any green screen, but one thing that they've done is if you do actually come over to here and click on the overlay, you can see where we've now got green screen at the bottom. If there's no green in it, or even if there is in fact, but you're sharing a specific application, when you click on green screen, the other effect it has is to remove the background, even if the background isn't actually green. So it just means that you're only gonna see that specific app. So that's something that I used to do previously with, uh, with as I say, with the cropping, where I'd uh, try and crop in the side to get it to exactly the right size, just to crop in on that specific uh, area like this, something like this. Well, now basically it's a lot easier. You don't need to bother doing that. You just simply select the application you want and then click on green screen and then it will activate it. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it will crop out the, the, the background from the, the desktop. One thing to bear in mind is if you do do that, but you do have green in your in your application or something, uh, then that will obviously key that out as well. So that is one thing to bear in mind. It, uh, it won't work in that instance. Uh, but if you are trying to uh, key out the green screen, then it will work perfectly, which is what I've been doing down at the, uh, the bottom with this uh, keynote uh, presentation. So in that case, what I've got is I've actually set the uh, keynote presentation. I've got uh, no radius on it. And then I've set that to my keynote. Uh, and then so you can see I've got this window here and that is basically now, if I stretch that over the full screen, I've now got this whole uh, window here over the top of my 
uh, screen. So if I come back to my previous slide, whoops, Daisy, come back to this one rather, uh, and then come back to my previous slide in here. Uh, there we go. That's how that was working basically. It was just showing over the top of it. And if I just come down one more time, then I've got this one that slid over the top of it. And as you can see from down below, uh, all I'd done there was the uh, the actual <laughs> text was just green. That's how I got that effect of the text running in. So let me just show that one more time. Uh, you can see that the, uh, if you look on the, the sort of bottom part, <laughs> the actual uh, uh, presentation, you'll see that the text coming in is green, but the effect it has on my screen is that it gives that see-through cutout. Uh, and that's an effect that people do, you know, in editing software and things like that. But now you can obviously just do it in Ecamm itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off that screen sharing for the moment and just come out of here. And this you can see is the uh, presentation. Like I say, it didn't, it didn't take me, I don't know, 30 minutes or something just to throw this together before we started on, uh, before I started recording. Uh, and so I've got my little lower third, this little thing that came bouncing in and it means basically you can use all of the animation effects I wouldn't recommend going overboard with animation to be honest <laughs> but you can use all of the different animation effects that you've got in Keynote and you can use those in Ecamm Live. The only uh, one thing to bear in mind is when you are doing this you could share it out to an extra monitor so if you've got a separate monitor then you could just uh, play this as normal and share that particular screen uh, but what I'd recommend doing is there is a uh, play in window option. Uh, I did talk about this in the video that I did all about uh, Keynote with Ecamm but if you come into uh, this play uh, at the top it is either play slideshow which is the default so normally just when you press you know to play a slideshow it will uh, play full screen but you can also play slideshow in window. There's also a button for that in the menu bar that is not there by default. So normally you have this play button, but if you right click in the menu bar and click on customize toolbar, uh, by the way, most Mac apps, if you uh, click in the, tool, the, uh, the toolbar, you can customize it in this way. Uh, but somewhere in here, there will be one which says uh, play in window, which looks like I can even see the icon up here, but for some reason I can't find it in this, <laughs> this group of icons here. Uh, somewhere in there, there is play in window. Uh, there it is. <laughs> so if you just drag that one up into the top, then you'll always be able to play in window. So now when I click on that one, it actually just plays it in a window. And there you can see that little animation that came in at the start. Now you can do this in uh, PowerPoint as well. So let me just get rid of this for a moment. Just get rid of that overlay. Uh, and I'll show you how you'd basically do exactly the same thing in PowerPoint. So if I open up uh, PowerPoint, uh, and by that, I mean uh, showing in a, uh, a window rather than uh, full screen. So if you uh, open up PowerPoint and then you come over to the uh, slideshow here in the, uh, the ribbon, click on slideshow and then you've got one here that says set up slideshow. So you click on that one uh, and then here you've got a few different options and it's basically these top two that we're looking at. So the default is presented by a speaker full screen. Um, well, we want to click on the second one, which is browsed by an individual uh, in a window. So if we click on that one, then now when we activate this as a slideshow, uh, it will basically just pop up in a window exactly the same as the, uh, the keynote version did. Well, there you go. That is Ecamm Live version 3.9 beta 4. Uh, it's just packed with new features. I can't wait for this to be released. I'll be doing a whole series of uh, new videos, basically, that are a new workflow, really, for Ecamm Live. Uh, I won't be uh, using the same way that I've been using overlays and things like that before. I mean, graphic overlays to create borders and things like that. It's uh, basically a whole new way of doing things and it's such a great update or will be a great update when the, uh, the final version comes out. But in the meantime, if you haven't got it, definitely go and give this latest beta a try. And uh, I'd love to hear what your favorite feature is or uh, how you are thinking that you can be implementing some of these things yourself into your workflow. So don't forget to go and uh, like and subscribe and comment down below with all of that. Uh, doesn't this overlay look bo boring now compared to that uh, last one? <laughs> uh, so I'll probably be doing a bit of an update of all of my overlays in the next uh, week or so, I should imagine, if not later today. <laughs> yeah, I'm usually one of these people that when I get an idea into my head, I just go ahead and do it. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Maybe in my next video, I'll be look a little bit different. But uh, yeah, great features. Really love it. And uh, don't go anywhere because there are some more great videos coming up all about Ecamm Live over on the right hand side. So until the next video, have a great day.